Welcome back, Toronto Wine Drinker, torontowinedrinker.com. And um, I'm a very lucky person. Uh, the other day I was in Niagara, beautiful uh, surroundings. Now I'm up uh, hanging out with Tyler Philp, wine lover, saber master extraordinaire. We're going to go over a lot of this stuff, but I, I love it up here. It's a really great place. It's peaceful up here. It's peaceful up here. Yeah. Thank, I'm, I'm learning that uh, wine can take me to some nice places. It can. Yeah. It can. So and it's not always further south, you know. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, so where are we? We are uh, two thirds of the way to Barry. Okay. Uh, so straight up the 400. This is a little place called uh, called Newton Robinson, just near Bradford, Newmarket, in that area. Uh, it's you know it's peaceful up here, just just below the snow belt, so we don't get hammered too badly with that. Right. Uh, it's it's nice. You know, we used to my wife and I used to be in the city, and uh, it's just. It's peaceful up here. We it's like nice. it. Yeah. All you have right we here is just, what is this? This is 27. This is Highway 27, and we've got two acres, an old farmhouse, and, uh, you know, it gives the opportunity to the kids to run and uh, savor champagne uh, right. uh, out, in, out in nature. <laughs> so. Gives you a lot of space. Now, the way uh, I found uh, Tyler Philp is I was online. I, I think I ran into your Twitter feed, Could which be. somehow took me to a video of you chopping the head off a champagne bottle with a sword. I've been known to do that. Yes. Uh. And you... you uh, you did a great job, and I was like, you know what, I have to try that. So I, I tweeted him really quick. I said, can I try it? He said, sure, I'm lonely up here on Highway 27. Come so, and visit. Please come and visit yeah, me. Yeah, come on, come on up and visit. So a week later, two weeks later, here I am. Mm -hmm. And we've got some champagne here, I guess sparkling wine. Sparkling wine, yep. Yep. And uh, yep. we're going to chop the head off it. But before we do that, tell me about your love of wine and your love of chopping you know, bottles apart. Well, these things happen, you know. Uh, <laughs> the, the wine sort of came along by by accident, and I've explained this uh, in, in other other videos that I've done. But but I, I'm I'm a pilot, it's what I do for a living, mm. and I taught a gentleman how to fly, who was a, a wine connoisseur. Oh, okay. And cool. This is 1994 to 96ish, um, and it, I didn't drink at all prior to that for no reason, but. Uh, but he would take us, you, you know, you'd, you'd work on his, I was his instructor, his, his flight instructor, so I'd do his licenses and his ratings, and, and he would go for his exams. When he was finished these exams, he'd always buy me a case of something or a bottle of something. It would always be That's really high-end wine. Yeah, yeah. But I had no idea what, <laughs> well, I, I, what you're I, drinking. I go, that's yeah. great. Is this is this any good? Uh, dear boy, this is the best. <laughs> I don't know what makes it the best. He would explain these things. I would tell him how to track the needles in the airplane and, and explain the theory of flight to him, and he would talk, he would, in return, he would just talk, talk, wine. talk, talk wine, and we wound up going out for dinners and traveling all over the place. I used to fly him down to Atlantic City and Chicago and places like this. Quite the life, man. It was great, yeah. and and this just grew on me. I mean, he's passed away now; he's long gone. But but he sort of planted this seed, and, and mm -hmm. it's just it's just sprouted into something that, that I love. I love it because there's you cannot know everything about this subject. It's an endless exploration. Sabridge is something that that uh, again I, I stumbled upon. Uh, someone I, someone I used to know. Um, said, hey, have you ever seen this? And he had a, like a, almost like an executioner's hatchet he was doing this with in a little Mickey Mouse, uh, you know, the little Demi bottle of, yeah, of yeah. Like, you know, you're going to cut your hand off. And, and he goes, no, no. I said, you know, I think this should be done with a sword. So you Google it and you go, oh, look at that. It is done with a sword and uh, I need to find a sword. So, uh, yeah, so I do this. Where, where'd you find this thing? Well, there's a little military shop just north, uh, just north of me in Cookstown. Okay. This is an 18th, 18th century sword bayonet. Wow. This is fantastic. You know, some, uh, of my, some of my friends were nervous with it. They're like, okay, you're going up into the boonies to see a guy. With a weapon. With a, with a sword. That's right. Yes, but I, a lot of don't, trust don't, here. Don't be afraid. Right. I've so, done this before. <laughs> so, we have, so we have this 18th century uh, a saber. Now, is it always called saber? Like, when I call it a sword, am I wrong? Well, this supposed to be a saber. It's, uh, the, the, the concept is called saberage. Um, okay. You can do this with a fancy sword. You can do this with a big butcher knife. Uh, it's it's even been done uh, with the, the 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 base of a champagne flute by sliding that up. Really, it's all technique. It's all about hitting a pressure point on the bottle, yeah. and you just have to hit it at the right at the right angle with the right amount of force, and it'll fly off. It, it's fantastic. Now, how, um, now, do you know the history of Sabridge? I mean, is this like a like a well, from the military or something? Yeah. But, there's there's many theories. I mean, the popular theory. Uh, and I don't actually think anybody really knows where this came from, but the, right. the, the popular story is that Napoleon used to do this in victory. Really? He used to, they'd, they'd ride away in victory and, and the soldiers would all have a bottle of champagne and you know, they're out on the horse going, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and shaking it like the, the Indy 500 or whatever. But they would, they would just chop it just off. Just chop the, the head of the bottle off, the, the cork of the bottle off and, and, and drink it as they go. Wow. Um, yeah, whether there's any truth to the Napoleon story, I don't know, but that seems to be the most recognized of, of the... Uh, but of it, the it's got a long history, though. It's oh, been it's around been for done, a long It's been time. done for, for right. ages, yeah. And yeah. It, no glass gets into the bottle or into the, no, your no. wine glass or anything? Just... Unlike 
uh, port tongs, if you're familiar with port tongs, where you, you use the heated tongs and a feather in ice water. We'll do that another day. Um, <laughs> it, 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 there's pressure inside the bottle. So when, you do it, when, you, when you'd use the tongs on a bottle of, uh, of vintage port, yeah. little fragments of glass get in, get in the wine. They do. In this case, the pressure inside a bottle of, of quality sparkling wine champagne is about uh, about uh, 90, uh, 70 to 90 uh, psi, which is about the same as a uh, as a truck tire. Okay. Yeah. So when when you do hit the end, the the pressure breaks the end of the bottle off. There is an amount of, of gas and, and a small amount of wine that, that is going to come out, and that's going to throw any fragments of the glass. The glass is just going to No, I've done it a hundred times. Never. Wow. Once has there ever been an issue with uh, with glass in the? Did you ever, like the first time you did it? Was it like did you sm smash it all over the place, or did you get it right on the first draw, or what? The first time I did it, it worked. I thought, whoa, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> okay. uh, I got to do that again. And yeah, then yeah. you start trying different things, try, trying different uh, different weapons, different tools, and some work better than others. Uh, last uh, last year, earlier this year, uh, somebody asked me if I would do it with a hockey skate. Did you so, do it? And actually, it was the end of the hockey season last year when yeah. the Leafs got clobbered by the Bruins there. Um, <laughs> and, and I was hosting a dinner downtown uh, Toronto, and, and a lady said, you got to do this with a skate. And so so it didn't work. Oh, it didn't. And the reason it doesn't work, and I'll explain that. Um, that would have been awesome. Do you want me to demo one? Yeah, let's, I'll, let's, I'll, I'll demo let's one. And, demo, and then yeah. uh, we'll uh, carry on, and maybe I can try and destroy something. But Blue Giovello Prosecco. Okay, so we went for the good stuff. Yeah, so this is a Vino, <laughs> what's his name? Gino Vanelli's brother, I think, makes this stuff. Really? No. Oh, so. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a big Prosecco guy. I, don't I only know. say that because I heard the song yesterday. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, and anyway. Here we have just a regular knife. You're just cutting this thing. So up. this is just, I'm just using the, the, the blade on the end of the corkscrew. Right. Um, you want to prepare the bottle prior to you you can't just pick the bottle up with the cage the the moose let the, the cage attached and the foil on and and whack the bottle it isn't going to work okay um and you're going to redirect the pressure if you do that because the cage is still on and the bottle is going to split down towards your hand lots of people have been cut doing this there's videos of uh, uh, online of bottles exploding in people's hand Jeez. never right. ever ever shake the bottle before doing it. Never. No. And if you do, leave it to it, sit for a while. And if you do let it sit, it, it, you'll, you'll increase that pressure and the thing will just explode like a grenade and I've seen it happen. So I'm going to stand it's, back. Yeah, no. <laughs> you're you're All safe. Right. All right. Um, and you said this is called what now? Everyone calls it the cage, but it's actually got a Well, the cage. The, the mus mousselet. Mousselet. Mous okay. Mousselet, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so all I do is just remove the... You don't have to remove this, but what I want to do is expose the seam on the bottle. All There's right. a seam where the two... The two um, during the production of the bottle that runs up to the lip. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's important not to loosen the cage until you're ready to go. The bottle becomes live and you're swinging it around doing this and talking and bang, you get it in the head. <laughs> uh, someone told me a, a while back that the most common eye injury is, is champagne corks. No, it's not really. That's what somebody told me. All right. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but let's go with that. <laughs> right. um, and yeah, you always so, do this outside, I guess, because your wife would be kind of annoyed if you No, I do this but... inside. I've broken lights, I've windows, paintings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, do not underestimate the power of the champagne cork. This, uh, th you read about this online, people say, oh, it, it flies off about uh, six to nine feet. Nonsense. This How thing far? will go 20, 30 feet. Jeez. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, don't don't uh, don't underestimate what what this uh, this is capable of. It, it is somewhat dangerous. Yeah. Practice before you do this for your friends. Um, or we'll children. talk and yeah. we'll talk a little bit before I do it. We'll talk a little bit about about. I, I mentioned the skate. Um, you'll, you're going to read online how you're supposed to use the blunt edge of of the the blade. Yeah. Uh, that's not true. Okay. That's that, that, I mean, it, it will work fine. What you need though is a, is either a sharp or a square corner to hit it. The skate, as it's many rounded. people know, is slightly rounded yeah. on, on the blade. So when that rounded edge comes down the neck of the bottle and hits it, it just skips off. And I tried it six, seven times. Could I could it. not. And all you're doing every time you hit the end of the bottle is you're shaking it. So bang and bang and you get frustrated, you hit it harder and bang, bang. Now you're shaking up. the contents and finally it goes and boom, it blows up in your hand. Wow. All right. Okay. So I use, and I've done it a hundred times, the sharp end of the blade. Okay. Um, it, will it work with the blunt edge? As many people say online, sure it'll work. You, your uh, chances of skipping it off the end of the, the, the lip mm. are much greater. Okay. The, the knife does not have to be sharp, but I use the, 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 sharp the sharper side of, of the, the blade, yeah. Okay. All righty. Let's open this up and yeah. see uh, what So goes. when you do it, it helps when the bottle is very cold. Okay. If you increase the temperature of the wine, you increase the temperature of the gas. It expands, and and when you, you know, when you open a bottle of champagne, 
That's why it foams up so much if it's warm. Yeah, sure. But when you open a bottle of champagne in a restaurant or, 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 or at home, you want to keep pressure on the top. Like I've loosened it. The bottle is now live because I've loosened the mousselet. Right. Um, I don't need to remove it to do this, but obviously to slide the saber down, I'm going to have to reposition my hand. So you're exposing the cork right. um, or, or you're, you're, the bottle is now live. And before I do that, I'm holding the pressure on the bottle. I'm looking for the seam. I just pull the cage up clear yeah. of the neck. I don't need to take it off. You can, but that's just monkeying around with the bottle. And the last thing you want is to boom, it goes off, <laughs> which will happen right. on a hot summer day when you're out trying to do this. But so there's the seam. I'm looking right at it. My weapon's here and we're good to go. So I'm just going to hold the bottle. You're stand you have to step bit. back. Just play it safe, my friend. Try not to aim at the camera. Eh? Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> here we go. Ready? Yeah. And it's just one continuous moment. Watch the follow through. One okay. continuous motion, I should say. Here we go. That's it. All right. That's awesome. Isn't that fantastic? Look at that thing. Yeah. And, and so a lot of the time, uh, it cuts off perfectly clean. It's, yeah. it's great. And any little fragments of glass have, have flown off. I'll get a close-up of this after, but sure, it's, yeah. it's about as clean as it gets. It doesn't get any better than that. That's yeah. a bottle of Prosecco. Uh, production method, Charmet, uh, the Charmette method, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, uh, this was uh, not made using the method traditional, uh, the traditional method of, of champagne production, so the quality of the bubble may not be quite as much. It didn't froth at all. It tells me that the, you know, when you pour this in the glass, it's probably not going to be quite as spectacular uh, uh, mm. in terms of bubbles as, as a, a natural... Um, a traditional traditionally, method, traditionally yeah. produced, uh, produced um, bottle of champagne. So, okay. yeah, but it worked fine. There was enough pressure in there, and that's awesome. That's all there is to it. Can I try it? You want to try it? Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Okay, so here's my my saber. But first, I got to prepare the bottle. Yeah, so okay. just prep the bottle first. Which you, you one know, do you want me to go with? Oh, I, we we, we want to drink the uh, the nice Ontario wine here last. So why don't, why don't okay. we pr try on that one? And okay, yeah. So I got to get this foil off with the handy knife. Yep, yep. Sometimes there's a tab on it to. Uh, to peel it off, but okay. yeah, it just it pays to prep the bottle and don't point it at the, your host. Yeah. That's good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, eh? I gotta pay attention to that. I never, I never really thought about it to be honest. So we get this off. So you, you a hundred of these, you say? Oh, at least yeah. You've done. Yeah, yeah, I do this uh, all over the place uh, for for. People it, really dig you know, it. Eh? It's like a show. This is a, a parlor trick. That's all it is. It's completely unnecessary. There's absolutely <laughs> no point to it whatsoever. It's just the coolest trick. Yeah, yeah. Next okay. to the port tongs, this is the coolest trick in the book. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. So you clean. It. I mean, if you if you pull that uh, foil off the neck, uh, you know, carefully, you can actually leave that that shoulder label as well. It'll just it'll cut off nicely and uh, okay. for sure. in terms of presentation. But should I get rid of this or is that okay? No, just, yeah. no, you don't need okay. to. So now I got to put my thumb so on. So have you found the seam? Yeah, it's right just, here. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now that you know where it is, just put your thumb on the top just to hold it. I guess there's two seams, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends on the bottom. There. There. Yeah, there's one there. And there's one there? Sure, yeah, there. Yeah. So just, just know where it is, basically. Okay. And uh, six turns counterclockwise. Always six turns. Is it? Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, you're not kidding. Useless knowledge, but, you know, <laughs> these things. Yeah, six turns. Look at that. Yeah. Cool. Good. Okay. All right. All right. So, so just yeah, and just kind of wiggle it a little bit to loosen it away from. You want to have a clear shot at the at the lip where the seam meets the lip. That's the weakest point of the bottle. Like so, is that exactly? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And uh, so, I guess what left hand and right hand. Well, you fire it off whichever way you want. Uh, you want to go this way, or I guess I'll it, go it's that up way. to you. I'll, I'll, I'm going to stand back here. So what am I doing here? So I'm okay. So now now you need to reposition your hand down to just hold the <laughs> bottle like this. All right. Remember that it's now it's now it's live, live, right? So right. so yeah. And there's the seam. Maybe rotate a little bit so you can see the seam. Yeah. Yep. And do your thing. And then just slide it straight up. Uh, so so take you can take a practice run at it. Just just slide it down without hitting it hard, just so you can feel it. Yep. And and you don't want to hit it up at the tip because there's not going to be as much force. But you know something like this. Yeah. And just be positive about it. Don't hesitate. Just just wham. And it, wham. it goes. It goes great. Right, yeah. Here we go. Give it a good one. Oh. Oh. Nope. Okay. <laughs> like you mean it. <laughs> you don't like the bottle. The bottle's not your friend. <laughs> is this the trick bottle you get? <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, I'm hitting this thing. My turn. I took a piece of glass out of it. Did you? Yeah. Oh, we're chipping away at it. So, sorry, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Okay. I knew this was so, going to So the, the, the chip of the is out of the glass uh, right, right where yeah. it meets the lip there. So I'm going to rotate it over to the other, okay. uh, the other side. And uh, there we go. What the hell? What the hell? That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> How'd you do that? Well, you can try again. Yeah. You know what? It, it's you're not pushing hard. It's just it's a firm, positive motion. Like down you go, and and I don't even think about it. It's just, but if you if you uh, you know. Uh, it's not going to work. It's going to skip off the end. You want to just wham. So don't be a pathetic wimp. Don't be a wimp yeah. about okay. it. Yeah. All right. Do you want to prep this one? I feel better. I, if you I can. It. Sure. Yeah. So this is the. Uh, and we'll, we'll drink this one. Oh. Okay. We'll in fact, I had this last night. I hosted a dinner in uh, in Alliston up here. Yeah. Um, at a great restaurant. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna plug the restaurant because it's that good. It's called Bistro Seven Seven in Alliston. You, you, okay. Yeah, it's it's worth going to. This is the uh, the Cuvée Catherine from Henry of Pelham, and, and everybody enjoyed this wine uh, All right. yesterday. So I'm yeah. gonna really whack this one. Yeah, yeah, like you mean it. This time I'm gonna do it the right hand. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Well, the left-handed didn't work. Ambidextrous, so huh? Well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So again, so it, it's secured, so I can do whatever I want to this bottle right now because it isn't live. The the cage is still done up. So I'm gonna try and peel this off, sort of in a decorative fashion. You know, you imagine. People want to see the bottle when you're all done, so I'm going to peel it off nice and nice and neat. Okay. Leave that shoulder label on there so it looks nice. Right. Yep. I feel like kind of less of a man right now. No, don't, don't, don't. don't. Yeah. A little bit bummed. All right. <laughs> okay, so the seam is right there, or right there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you want to undo six it? turns? Yep, right. six turns. Here we go again. You sure you're not joking around? Eh? No, like that no, was no, a trick, trick bottle. Yeah. One. I would never do something like that. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yep, just loosen it off. Perfect. And the seam is seam. Got it. right there. There you go. Okay. Give me this thing. Like I mean it now. Like you mean it. Do you start, like, do you uh, come uh, down? On, you're on the bottle when you start. You don't want to chop it. You want right. it. You're on the bottle when you start. Just a little more of a run at it. Pull it back further. Mm -hmm. There you go. And just like you mean it. Wham. You're I'm not with... laughing at you. No, no, no. I'm laughing with you. So, so... Dude. <laughs> we have to. Hang on. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's you know, fantastic. Do you know how good that's making me Does feel? Does that feel, right feel better now? <laughs> Stupid sabers. All right. Here we go. Let's have a little of this. Look at that. It's clean as a whistle, eh? It is. It's beautiful, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. And this is a this is a nice uh, sparkling wine. This is uh, Chardonnay and uh, Pinot Noir. It's, it's really quite nice. It's lovely. Yeah, those tend to be if people don't know, those tend to be the grapes, right? With uh, yep, with sparkling. Yeah, there are, there are there are several uh, Pinot Meunier, and uh, if it's if it's Blanc de Blanc, it's it's pure Chardonnay right. in the Champagne. And, and uh, Pelham does make a, a a wine, a little higher end wine than this. I, I forget what this one sells for. This is. Uh, if I said uh, 18, I'd, I'd be somewhat guessing, but uh, there's another one. I think it's up around 44, and that's a that's a Blanc de Blanc. So it's right. a char purely a Chardonnay wine. And the Blanc de Noir is purely Pinot purely, Noir. Purely the the black grapes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cheers. Right, cheers. Thanks for that. My pleasure. So I didn't tell you part of this whole process. You got to go around and pick up all the glass on the uh, grass here before my <laughs> I kids. I was going to say before the kids come <laughs> over and roll around, your wife would love that. <laughs> Wow, that was Fantastic. awesome! Hey, that's no, my pleasure. I enjoyed it. That was awesome. Now you're saying that I could do that with a uh, with a butcher knife. With yeah, not too many people have uh, antique swords laying around the house, but you can buy a actual sam champagne saber. Yeah. Uh, the the higher end wine shops sell these things, and it looks more like an Aladdin type thing. You know, it's a like a scimitar. Big, well, it's all shiny and everything. I mean, I like the antique look to it, but uh, but it, it's yeah, it's all shiny gold handle on it and bright silver blade, and yeah, it's fine. Or yeah. you can use a big butcher knife. Right, has to have a little bit of weight to it, is what I find. If you're, if you use, uh, um, I know a guy's got the great big honking. Uh, if I said Aladdin, that would be right. You know, big yeah, curved yeah. blade. What, what do you yeah, call it? Scat yeah, right yeah, that's there. that's right. Yeah. So he's got one of those. He uses it. It's fine. It's a little too much though. Yeah. Um, a lot of antique shops. You go around to the little antique malls around uh, north of Toronto. Here's a lot of them. You can buy bayonets, mm -hmm. but they're shorter. Um, a traditional bayonet's only only about that long. Okay. And it's a nice old antique blade. It'll cost hundred dollars or so and it's it's, it's really wow. nice yep thanks a lot for having me up my pleasure um i gotta go around and pick up the glass you do so we have to cut this short so to speak um but cheers to you and uh next time we'll maybe we'll be able to have a look at your cellar and what was the other thing we we're gonna do we're gonna do uh the port tongs let's do the port tongs one time we'll do the port that's tongs. even better that's even awesome. better and you can't go wrong uh <laughs> tyler uh tyler philp not philip that's tyler right philp one i one l no s that's right tylerphilp.com thanks tyler cheers to you my pleasure okay. cheers. bye bye yep